Hi guys, I'm George. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here in Wimbleball Lake in Somerset. There's a rowing race going on, actually quite a few different rowing races going on. And my little sister Harriet is racing today and she's part of the local team here at Wimbleball. I'm going to try and capture some of this beautiful landscape behind me, some rowers going past. So let's start painting. I'm painting on a canvas that I've taped to a plywood panel and I've toned to a light brownish grey. I start by dividing my canvas into a grid which helps me place the main compositional lines accurately by comparing the vertical and horizontal relationships of the features within the scene. I'm painting with thin down raw amber paint which is quite a quick drying colour especially when applied thinly. So I've decided to place the horizon line quite high up which leaves me with room to paint more of the lake and the river bank in the foreground as ultimately I intend to have the rowing boats work as the focal point of my painting. Here I'm painting in the sky using a filbert brush and a colour mix of cobalt blue and titanium white. I'm painting around the sections of the canvas where I want to place the clouds to avoid having to layer the light paint for the clouds over the blue paint of the sky and as I'm painting wet into wet this would result in the colours mixing and muddying the colours. To paint the clouds I'm not using pure white paint which is a common mistake that people make but rather I'm mixing some light slightly off-white colour mixes for different sections of the clouds. For the lightest areas of the clouds which are catching direct sunlight, I'm using a colour mix of titanium white and a small touch of yellow ochre to give the clouds a slightly warm glow. And for the shadow section of the clouds, I mix a greyed down purple mix using a combination of titanium white, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson and cobalt blue. However, I make sure not to paint the shadow sections too dark as the clouds are overall a very light value when compared to other areas within the scene. And it's really helpful to remember to view the scene as a whole and to avoid getting too caught up in the individual components of the scene, especially at this early stage of the painting. I'm now painting in the water which is reflecting the blue sky above it. And as I paint this middle section of the lake, it takes on a lighter, paler gray hue as this section reflects the light clouds. And then at the riverbank, the water takes on a bit of a darker hue where the riverbed underneath has a bigger influence than the reflection of the sky in this section. And in the foreground, it's always where you find the areas of most contrast. So the darker ripples are darker, but some of those areas which are facing perpendicular to the sky and reflecting the light clouds are lighter. And also there's a slight warm purplish hue in a few sections where we can see a bit of the riverbed through the water. Here I'm painting these lovely rolling hills on the other side of the lake which are so iconic to the Somerset countryside. As it's mostly a sunny day, sections of these hills are receiving direct sunlight which gives them a warm golden yellow hue due to the warm colour temperature of the sunlight. Yet due to the clouds in the sky, certain areas of the landscape are cast in shadow and are comparatively cooler in colour temperature as well as being darker in tonal value. As the clouds are moving whilst I try and paint the scene, the shadows on the hills are also moving accordingly. So it's hard to place the shadows entirely through diligent observation. So rather I'm trying to focus on placing them approximately and also in a position which works well compositionally. And I actually heard a quote which went, the greatest gift that God gave the landscape painter was the shadow of a cloud. And I can't remember the name of the artist who said it. So if you know, please let me know in the comments. But throughout the history of landscape painting, shadows cast by clouds have featured prominently 
in many paintings, sometimes creating significant shapes in the composition, or simply conveniently covering up some areas which may require a lot of time-consuming, complex detail, so that shadow can just conveniently block it out. Using the fine point of a small round brush, I'm now adding in the small details of a rowing boat with two rowers on it going past. And this is the boat that my sister is racing on. I'm also carefully painting their reflections and that of the boat on the water below. Even though by this point the boat has passed, I know that this reflection will happen and I can also reference other passing boats to observe how these reflections appear. I'm now painting this buoy in the water, which marks the finish line. As the sun is lighting the scene from above and to the right, the top right hand side of this buoy is receiving more light, so I'm painting these areas with a lighter white colour mix and thicker paint as well in these light highlights. I've actually got here my sister, who is the rower at the back on this little boat. Uh, how was it racing out there today? It's really lovely. It's been a beautiful day. Lots of people here. Um, got some shiny things. So yeah, she did really well. A lot of calories burnt, I imagine, going up and down that lake and celebrating with some well-deserved cake. So if you enjoyed that video, please give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a super thanks if you're feeling generous. And I'll see you in the next video.